Mr. President, I uh, rise today to recognize NASA's STS-135 mission. As the presiding officer knows, at, at approximately 11.30 a.m. tomorrow, Space Shuttle Atlantis is scheduled to lift off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida with a crew of four on board. The 12-day mission will deliver supplies, logistics, and spare parts to the International Space Station. This will be the final mission of the Space Shuttle era that began just over 30 years ago. Now, a senator from Colorado may not seem like the most likely person to come to the floor today to speak about the Space Shuttle, but NASA and space exploration actually have quite a bit to do with Colorado, and it's something uh, that I care deeply about. Colorado has one of the three top aerospace economies in the country with a hand in every aspect of space, government, commercial, and academic, civil, and military. We helped develop the space shuttle and many of the missions that flew on it, and we are playing a major role in the development of the shuttle's successors. Now, NASA has been a source of pride for all Americans from its very beginnings. We've cheered their triumphs and suffered with them during their tragedies. And all the while, we've been inspired by their mission of exploration. The shuttle era is no exception. Ever since the first launch in April of 1981, the names of the space shuttles, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor, have become familiar to even casual observers. This is a testament to the vehicle itself and those behind it. I would like to acknowledge all of those who've flown on the shuttle, the thousands of unseen heroes at NASA who support them, and the contractors at too many companies to name who make it all possible. In sum, flying the shuttle is a true team effort. Everyone who has been a part of that team should be proud of what they have accomplished. I see my colleague from Florida across the chamber, and I know he's uh, also very, very aware of that this has been a team effort across the board. And I know uh, I'd be remiss at this point if I didn't mention those who pay the ultimate price for their service. We will never forget the images of the horrible tragedies that befell the shuttle, one occurring merely seconds after leaving the pull of Earth's gravity, the other just minutes away from being home again. We will always remember the crews of the space shuttles Challenger and Columbia. This milestone, Mr. President, of the history of space flight forces us to reflect on what we've learned and where we're going. America is now in the unenviable, pos unenviable position of having no U.S.-derived means of sending humans into space, including to vital assets like the International Space Station. For the near future, we will have to rely on our international partners, namely Russia. But that position will change. It must change, I would add. NASA is developing a successor to the shuttle based on important work done during the Constellation program. And the burgeoning commercial sector is literally changing the way we access space as we speak. These complementary development tracks will build a more robust space exploration enterprise. As the presiding officer knows, uh, I have an interest in climbing mountains, as does he, and I've had the great good fortune to stand on the top of some of the world's highest mountains. And I believe it's in our nature as humans to explore and understand the world around us, to keep stretching to achieve goals just beyond our grasp. Mr. President, the shuttle has allowed us to reach farther than many ever dreamed possible. But the end of the shuttle area is by no means the end of exploration. At its heart, NASA is not about parts, it's about people. Even after the shuttle assumes its rightful place in history, legions of engineers, scientists, pilots, and other adventurers will carry its mission forward into the next phase of exploration. Keeping that spirit intact will be a fitting tribute to the space shuttle. I wish the crew of STS-135 a smooth and productive journey, and above all, a safe return. And Mr. President, before I yield the floor, I wanted to add an additional note. In, in Colorado, of course, we have 54 mountains that are over 14,000 feet. We have countless peaks 
below that uh, lofty elevation. But among the, two, the 100 highest peaks in Colorado, uh, we uh, note uh, Columbia Point, which is named to commemorate the astronauts and the mission that ended tragically. And we also have Challenger Point, both peaks in the top 100, both peaks linked by a high ridge. Uh, and in the middle of that high ridge is Kit Carson Peak, which is a 14,000-foot mountain. Uh, I've had the great fortune, good fortune, to stand on the summit of both of those peaks most recently, uh, Columbia Peak uh, in April. And the view is one that's uh, worthy of us as Americans. Uh, as we go forward, let's remember uh, the great successes of the shuttle program and build on them as we move forward as Americans, exploring the world, exploring the universe. I know my colleague from Florida shares those sentiments. I don't know that he's on the floor to speak uh, to this particular topic, but I look forward to working with him, given the importance of the space industry, in our space mission to his great state of Florida.